Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship at Our Saviors on this sunny and sprung ahead day. Good job getting your clocks straightened out today. Um, I'm Pastor Kiri. A special welcome to any of you who may be new to Our Saviors. If you are, we have a a connection card. We'd like to hear from you. Um, That's on our website under Connect. You can also find some copies at our Welcome Center. Uh, A couple of announcements today. In this season of Lent, we have a number of midweek things happening that we started last week. They've been going wonderfully. So Wednesday is Holden Evening Prayer Worship at 7 o'clock. That is in person and it's live streamed. Uh, Paul, our feature of that night is, uh, the series is Paul Oman, painting the stories of Jesus. Then we have a Lenten Bible study on Tuesday nights. That is on Zoom from 7 till 8. This week I'll be leading, and then Dr. Diane Jacobson will be back the two weeks after that to um, lead us on women in the genealogy of Matthew. Uh, we also, on Wednesdays, have had a series of Lenten speakers uh, geared sp- more particularly for our families with uh, young, young people. We led that off last week, and this coming week, we have a guest coming from the Jacob Wetterling Center who's going to talk about protecting my online footprint. So again, for families with young people, but if you're interested in that, grandkids, you just want to learn more, please, you can come at 530. Um, and then finally... We've been praying for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine this number of weeks. And if you would like to do something and give a financial gift, we have a place to suggest for you to do so. Uh, On the back of your happenings, you can see that we've got a link to to Lutheran World Relief. There has been an offer by two congregations in Wisconsin to match any funds that are given through the end of April up to $258,000. So that would be a wonderful opportunity to give a gift and have it matched. It's going to go towards relief efforts in Ukraine and to partner organizations in the countries that are receiving refugees. You can either make a check out to Our Saviors and mark it as Ukraine, or you can see how to give directly to Lutheran World Relief through their website on the sheet. I think those are all of the announcements this morning, so I invite you to stand as you're able, and in our places we'll share God's peace with a wave or a sign. Please remain standing for our opening song. Rivers just ahead Down the path of forgiveness Salvation's waiting there You built a mighty fortress Two thousand burdens high Your love is here to lift you up Here to lift you high If you're lost and wandering Come stumbling in like a prodigal child You walk on crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide All who strayed and walked away Unspeakable things you've done
like a prodigal child See the whole stars Come a little Let the gates of glory open Wide your lungs And wrecked again Come stumbling in Like a prodigal child See the whole stars Come a little Let the gates of glory Well, for those of you who are long-term members of Our Saviors, I'm sure you see a very familiar face up here on the stage. We welcome back Craig Clark with his gorgeous voice and his amazing guitar god skills. Craig, how long has it been since you've played with the band here at Our Saviors? It's been seven or eight years? Oh, my word. It's, it's such a joy to play with you again. I played with him for a funeral a, f a month or so back, um, so I had the pleasure of uh, being able to make some awesome music with him then, but with him on the guitar on the band, man, we love playing with you and hearing you. <laughs> you are welcome back anytime. <laughs> so we're going to completely bring it around in a different, uh, a different mood. Last week we learned a new modern hymn called Yet Not I But Through Christ in Me. So we're going to sing that now. So please join, us along, uh, join along with us in singing this new song. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love.
us pray. God, you are our refuge, and there is nothing that can separate us from you or that could keep you from gathering us in and protecting us fiercely. Forgive us from continuously trying to separate ourselves from you. And yet you run to protect us and draw us close to you, naming us and telling us that we belong. Your love is more full than we could ever possibly imagine. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Hello. There we go. I'd like to invite all the children to come forward for a message. Good morning. I love seeing it from this angle. They are all just moving forward. I love it. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so has anyone ever made a storm before? No, what do you think? Oh, should we try it? All right, I'm going to teach you how to make a storm using our hands. It's going to sound like a storm, but don't worry, it's not a real storm. Yeah, you've done it before, haven't you? So what I'm going to do, we're going to do a little bit here, and then it's going to come up twice in my story. So you're going to have to watch me, and I'm going to ask all of you to help with this. So as my hands go across... As they point to you, I want you to do what my hands are doing. All right, are you ready? So wait till my hands get to you. Did you hear it? Did you hear the start of the storm? If you listen carefully, it sounds like rain. Now, there's going to be two times in the story that we're going to make that storm. All right? So watch me for those parts. But here's my story today. Jesus liked to teach people using stories called parables. Now, through those parables, there's lessons that we learn. So we learn about how God would help us, um, especially when things aren't easy in our lives. So Jesus told this parable about two houses to many people as he sat with them on a mountain one day. He said this, I want to tell you about two different people. Each one wanted to build a house. One person was very smart and one was very silly. You know this, where do you know this story from? From Bible Live. Yeah, you guys did this in Bible Live, you're right. You guys, you guys made the storm using the lights and all kinds of stuff and the piano. Sorry, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was there. We use what's there. <laughs> so the smart person built a house on sturdy rock. Now, the, ro- the house was there in the rock, and bad weather came. Listen for it. Do you hear it? Now, that house did not fall because the smart person had built it on a sturdy rock. But the silly person built their house on sand and something very different happened. Bad weather came. Guess what happened this time? Because the silly person built their house on sand, it fell down. 
Yeah, you, yeah, he says, I knew it. <laughs> Jesus said, if you listen to me, you're building your life on the sturdy rock of God. If you don't listen to me, you're building your life on things that are like sand, and it'll just wash away. Now, what did you hear that was the same for both the silly person and the smart person? What happened to both of them? What came to their house? A storm. Yeah. I think that's a really, really important part of the story. That even if, whether we're smart or making silly choices, storms still come. And that can be like storms like we kind of made, right? We hear rain and thunder, or maybe even something big like a tornado or a hurricane, or scary things in our lives, right? Maybe somebody gets sick, and that's scary. We can say that's kind of like a storm in our lives, right? Now, there is a place that some kids go that's called Camp Noah. And that's a camp for kids who've lived through storms. And those are literal storms. So they're um, big storms like tornadoes or hurricanes, things like that. And they get together to find out where is God in all of that? Because God is there, right? The storms still come no matter what kind of life we're living. But God helps us through them. And then we get to do things like make blankets to give to Camp Noah, and they give them to those kids to wrap up in them and remember that God loves them even in those hard times that we might call storms. All right? So our confirmation kids, our 6th to 8th graders, and some other helpers made all these blankets up here. There's almost 50 of them. And at each Camp Noah camp, there's 50 kids. So we made enough blankets for an entire week of camp. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, if you're going to kids' ministries, I'll go with you that way. Otherwise, you can go sit back down. Thank you, Leisha. Our gospel today is from the Gospel of Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill, kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finished my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Full to the brim is an invitation into a radically different Lent, into a full life. It's an invitation to be authentically who you are, to counter scarcity and injustice at every turn, to pour out grace wherever it's needed. When we allow ourselves to be filled to the brim with God's lavish love, that love spills over, reminding us that all belong to God. Let's discover the expansive life God dreams for us. It's our second Sunday of Lent. And we continue our series full to the brim. So last week we introduced the wellness wheel. It looks like this. Uh, we handed it out. It was on our, uh, available on our website. Did you take some time to do it? You can still find it on our website or there are some paper copies on the, the Welcome Center front desk also. Uh, it's a tool to reflect on eight different areas in our lives from emotional and spiritual to financial 
and occupational, among others. The idea with this tool and this series is to explore what it means to live in an expansive life to reflect on the fullness that comes with right relationships with God, yourself, and others. And while it often isn't second nature or easy by any means, expansive spiritual living might be marked by these things. Awe and gratitude. A sense of self-worth rooted in God's love. Meaning and purpose in one's life by loving relationships, and joy that comes from using your God-given gifts. Sounds lovely, right? Realistic? I don't know. I find it easier, frankly, to be critical of what's wrong. What's wrong with me, my life, our world? We spent some time in our staff meeting this week working on our wellness wheels and reflecting on them. And I have to say, I found it more tempting to focus on what was lacking and being critical rather than focusing on what already felt full and expansive. Add to that the world circumstances that include an unjustified war raging, economic uncertainty, a winter that has kept hanging on, people suffering from serious illness, and I'll just throw teenage hormones in there on the list too. And it can feel like a lot. It's part of what's so intriguing to me about this series. This Lenten season, we are called to come together to be filled. To be filled to the brim with God's love and mercy. And then to free these gifts to overflow from us out to those around us. We're being called to measure our lives not by to-do lists, but by love. In today's gospel story, Jesus understands this struggle, this tug of war of sorts. Jerusalem has not always treated Jesus particularly well. It's his people, it's from where he comes, and yet it's clear he still loves it so very deeply. All he wants to do is to protect it, like a mother hen protects her brood. Jerusalem's actions can't and don't change that, for that is what true unconditional love actually looks like. We can be frustrating. We can be challenging. We can be difficult. We might even, intentionally or unintentionally, try to push God away. Yet God will remain with us, still loving us, because God's love never ends. I love this image of God as a protective and nurturing God. And this mothering image is even more poignant in contrast to the other animal image in this story. Did you catch that one? It's the fox. Herod's plotting against Jesus in his crafty but also destructive way seeks to bring Jesus down. It reminds us there are many things in the world that work against loving relationships both outright and sometimes just because life is complicated. Jesus' relationship with Jerusalem reminds of this complexity, even as it is life-giving. I was struck by a story I read this week about Parker, a man who's now age 32. His mother's love is as fierce and strong and tender as that of the mother hen in this Bible passage. But it wasn't always that way. Parker grew up in a southern state, and their family was deeply rooted in a church known for its conservative evangelical values. His mom, Sarah, likely had ideas and hopes and dreams for who her son would become. And while Parker officially came out to his mom that he was gay at age 21, he says he really spent his whole life coming out. He knew his mom had a sense of who he was, either by accident or by things like finding a note to one of his friends while she was doing laundry or through his search history on the computer. When Parker was 21, he met someone, 
And that is finally why he had the conversation where he said to his mom, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. You're welcome to come with me on this journey, but you've had that option for a really long time. Parker's mom, Sarah, says she felt like a rug had been pulled out from under her. She found herself asking what just happened. And her internal dialogue was saying, welcome to reality. You have a gay son. You are a woman of faith. What does that even look like? Her life was now outside the expectations set by her community and her church, and she struggled mightily. Sarah says she got the courage to start grasping her new world when Parker came to her and said, Mom, you need to understand, I've been your son for 21 years, and now I need you to be my mom. Sarah started looking for resources. She thought she was the only mom in the world whose faith and reality were in such conflict. She took those feelings of alienation and found a group on Facebook for moms of gay kids. And she began to own her own feelings and found words of grace and love and acceptance in that group. She had to re-examine the Bible and the way verses had been used against Parker and the LGBTQ community and meet God in a new place, a new expansive place. Sarah says when she first read a book that conveyed gay and Christian together in a positive sense, she cried hot tears because it was her first glimpse of hope. And finally, a big part of the process was seeing her son Parker happy and living authentically and meeting his friends and community, which she calls a beautiful, spirit-filled community. She became an advocate, a fierce and tender one for Parker and the LGBTQ community, channeling the hurt and pain and separation that had occurred in her family's life. In 2015, she made a homemade button that said, Free Mom Hugs. There it is. And she went with her son to the Oklahoma City Pride Festival. Anyone who made contact with her, she'd say, can I offer you a free mom hug? That day alone, she heard so many stories of pain and separation of people from their families and from their churches that she was inspired to found an organization called Free Mom Hugs. It now has chapters in 50 states. It's a place for parents and allies to offer emotional and tangible support to those who feel alienated due to their sexual orientation and gender identity. As a woman of faith, Sarah now speaks of her expansive understanding of God's love. She's gone from tolerating her son to accepting and affirming him. And with that has experienced God to an even greater degree and humanity along with it. Sarah's love for her son, and now so many others, is as strong and fierce and tender as a mother hen gathering her brood. Today's Bible story tells us that God's love for us is likewise. No matter your struggles, no matter your pain, no matter how you feel you fit in the world, God is your refuge. There is nothing that can separate you from God or could keep God from gathering you in, protecting you fiercely. God's love can protect from the foxes of this world that seek to steal life. God is calling you to live an expansive existence grounded in grace and mercy. So a friend of mine tried something in her church a few weeks ago, and I was moved by what she reported the thoughts shared were. So I'm going to step out on a limb and try it here today. We're going to have an option for sharing. <laughs> this week, if you've paid attention at all, you have seen too much violence, witnessed too much anguish, heard too much anger. Right now, let's pay attention to what is bigger and stronger and more resilient. 
where in this last week have you met God? Where have you seen or heard God? What has felt expansive in your life? We're going to take a minute to stop and remember. To remember what has opened your heart and moved you to love. And then if you'd like to share a thought, you can raise your hand. If you're in person or you can write it in the comments if you're online. Let's take just a minute. All right, look at I've got hands waving before I even ask for them. Woo! Go for it. Thankful for family and seeing God's love through family. Yeah. What else? So a friend, a friend in New Zealand who was having struggles, and it realized kind of we're all humanity together. We all have struggles, despite how far apart we might be. Anyone else? Oh, she's got, there's a teacher here, people. So Holly saw when cleaning up from a science lesson a group of kids singing God is so good together. Is there anyone else? Oh, in the back. So in physical therapy and had uh, maybe a breakthrough week, feeling stronger and taller, seeing God's love. Yeah, thank you. Did I see one more over here? There's one minor, surgeon's skill. Surgeon's skill. and I know who that was, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Keith. Uh, we had someone share earlier this morning that they had seen a video this week of a little girl in Ukraine singing Let It Go. Maybe some of you saw that while well, she was in a shelter with other people. And they really saw and felt God's presence in that place and through that song. One more. Thank you. A beautiful story of uh, a family asking for prayer for someone in the hospital on a respirator 
I'm repeating for our people online too. <laughs> uh, and, and, and that person passed away, but the family was able to reflect and give thanks that those prayers brought them through it, brought them together, and brought them peace through that loss. Thank you for that. Well, that was great. Thank you, everyone. We're going to close with prayer. Let's pray. God, you are our refuge. We give thanks that there is nothing that can separate us from your love or could keep you from gathering us in. Fill us this week, full to the brim, that your love and mercy will overflow us and be your witness in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing about the goodness of God, and I, I chose this song because I'm really... I'm really tough on myself, and I'm sure you guys all are tough on yourselves too, but um, even when I think, oh man, I've messed up, man, I just am not worthy, I'm not a good person, I have so much things I need to work on, the one thing I cling to over and over again is how good God is and how much he gathers me in and he loves me unconditionally. And I just, whenever I sing this song, that's what really speaks to me is we cannot, we have this little tiny piece of God that we see, but he's so much more. There's so much more goodness to him. Um, so as we sing, just think about that image of the mother hen gathering her children under her wing and just loving them up no matter where you are in life.
together in prayers for our lives, for our church, and for the world. Let us pray. Holy God, this life of ours is full to the brim. Our days are overflowing with emails and to-do lists, medical appointments and bills, assignments and deadlines. We wake up feeling behind. We go to sleep worrying about tomorrow. And we know there has to be more than this. So we pray. Bend down and show us the way. Leave breadcrumbs in the street. Point us toward awe and wonder. Guide us to intimacy and trust. Gift us with laughter that will make us cry and hope that will make us feel alive. We want a new kind of full to the brim. Show us the way, Lord. And Lord, today we pray for peace in the nation of Ukraine. Bring an end to this needless war. We pray for the churches and people of Eastern Europe receiving refugees. Kindle in the hearts of all your children the love of peace and guide with your wisdom the leaders of nations so that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of your love. And Lord, you hear us when we cry to you. Gather in and hold close those who are sick and hurting. Especially today we pray for Shelley Young, Sandy Bone, Ryan DeYoung, Pat Nelson, Nancy Wyatt, Keith Hammerbeck, Joe and Jamie Duffy and family, Jan Gilson, Gloria Sawcheck, David Kappelhoff, David Bone, Dale Gemble, Cindy Lustoff, Sherry, Brenda Varney, Bernice Dornbush, Audrey Lundstrom, and Alan John Finucci. And finally, Lord, today we pray for those who are grieving. May they feel your tender care. For Joyce and Bob Thordson on the death of Joyce's father, Al. For Wayne and Nola Howe on the death of Wayne's mother, Louise. For Terry and Wayne Fisher on the death of Terry's father, Richard. For the Hammerbeck and Tays families on the death of family member, Thecla. And for the family of Darv Bethke, whose memorial service was held here at Our Saviors this past Friday. Gracious God, take our prayers, gather them in, and answer them as you know how and you know best. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time to consider our offering. So uh, you, there are various ways you can give. Of course, if you are here in person, you can place your offering in the baskets uh, by the doors as you leave today. Uh, in person or online, you can always mail in a check. You can text a dollar amount that links you to a secure site, or you can give through our website at OurSaviorsLC.org. Well, we have a treat today. We have a musical offering. I think Jennifer will tell you a little bit more about it. I'm going to try to speak from this mic. Sorry, Judy. One of Judy and my goals for the next few years is we love doing duets together, so we're going to try to do more duets together. We usually go for something that's really flashy because you know us. <laughs> We're flashy women. Uh, however, we did choose something a little bit more subdued, not just for Lent, but um, it goes really well with the theme of today. Um, God as a faithful mother or father, um, a hen gathering her children under her wings. Um, it's Great as I Faithfulness, which is an old favorite hymn of everybody's. And as we play, I just, I invite you to reflect on the lyrics of this hymn um, in a very gorgeous, beautiful setting um, for four, pian four, four pianos, four hands on one piano.
beautiful. Thank you. We have some great talent right there. Let's pray as we give thanks for this musical offering and for all the gifts shared today. Gracious God, our hearts are full to the brim with gratitude, hope, fear, doubt, dreams, and belief. We are grateful for all you have given us. As we return a portion of these gifts to you, we pray that you would turn this offering into ministry so your love would spill out from us and from this place like water running into the world. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Well, it's time for Holy Communion, so you can get your communion kit handy. If you're at home, you can get your wine or grape juice ready as we share this meal that unites us, that ties us together, that gathers us in all in one place, which is God's love. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together and pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hear these words as you open your kits and receive communion today, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have welcomed us at your table, giving us a glimpse of you and your expansive love. Strengthen us and send us out to work for justice, peace, and joy, and to serve all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand to receive the blessing. As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be enthusiastic with hope and quick to point out joy. In all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life, for the blessing of God is upon you. Amen. Thank you.